Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for another YouTube video, All In Crypto here. And today we are going to be delivering another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update. And what an exciting time it is to be in the cryptocurrency markets. We are on the verge of an approval for an Ethereum ETF. More ETFs will follow and we're going to be talking about that a little bit in this video. There are rumors that a Solana ETF is going to be filed in June and Solana is the obvious choice uh, for the next altcoin in regards to um, being applied for an ETF as it is absolutely institutionally chosen and status. If you look at all the people that offer crypto products, Solana is typically right after Ethereum. It goes Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, uh, and then some of the others. But it won't just be Solana that gets an ETF. It will be the altcoin market generally, and then you'll end up with a kind of S&P uh, index for crypto, so on and so forth. And we've always said this is one of the amazing prospects with the cryptocurrency spaces. You guys that watch this channel regularly get to front run everybody else and all the liquidity is going to that is going to be coming into this market and there is going to be liquidity coming into this market we're going to be talking uh, about the general market state um towards the end of the video we've got lots of really interesting things to look at with the dollar with yields of course we're getting a lot of inflationary prints in the um uh, well across the board uh, that are kind of confirming what we thought in regards to inflation actually seeing disinflation um certainly coming down from where it was originally in the UK, I think, for example, it came out at, was it 2.3 or 2.9? We'll look at it. This is all the way down from 11 point something percent. And we know that markets generally have run into a bit of a wall, they've a bit of a stall box during this pullback that the risk markets have been enduring. The dollar's been strong on the back end of inflation uncertainties, and so have the yields. And now there's been a kind of reversion in that. So we have, as always, these markets updates are well and truly jam-packed, a lot to talk about. Uh, and let's just talk about what's currently going on. So we now have another spot Ethereum ETF being listed on DTCC under the ticker ETHV. This is exactly what happened for a Bitcoin spot ETF was actually approved. DTCC are the clearinghouse for the NASDAQ, essentially. They process, I think it's about $2 quadrillion annually. Um, this is essentially in some ways somewhat confirmation that an Ethereum ETF is on the horizon. And we have the likes of Standard Charter expecting a spot Ethereum ETF to be approved this week. This came out just yesterday and predicts 15 to $45 billion in inflows within the first 12 months. I think that is marginally lowballing things. Um, we also had over the past 24 hours the likes of Uniswap and Coinbase filing replies to the SEC. Vanek, who of course were the ones that were listed, um, also posted this. The SEC's comments are coming in. Uh, this is uh, an interesting um, tweet, that's for sure. Uh, and it talks about the art. You know, you've got lots of meme coins that we think are going to do very well. Meme coins will do well out of the broad uh, in regards to the scope of things, I think there was news actually yesterday that Robert F. Kennedy bought some GameStop. It's very much a political move that I think, um, but that's just my own take. And we have rumors now that a Solana ETF can be applied in June. So Solana is absolutely statist. Uh, there's no doubt about that, in my opinion. You can get that from not only the price action and just how well it's done. I'm still gutted about missing that $17 long. Um, because that would have just been something for the history books. Uh, I capitulated um, literally at the perfectly wrong time, but sometimes that's just a game of trading, uh, which is why we encourage people to stick to the investment side of things because you get to mitigate all that. As long as you're on the right side of the trend, you'll do just fine. The trend is your friend and never forget that. But Solana is absolutely status. If you look at it for all these sort of products that are offered out there in regards to crypto, the top 10 indexes, whatever it may be, uh, that Bitwise offer, Solana is very much number three. Uh, and it's the one that's most spoken about. It's the one that's got the most kind of backing from the institutions. And despite the problems that it has with its chain, uh, it's the one that I think is very much going to be zealously gone after when it comes to the next ETF outside of Ethereum. And, and this is the interesting thing with the Ethereum ETF, which is why we've been looking at the total two, which we believe is heading to $3.7 trillion. You're forming that right shoulder as we've been following along with, um, is there's going to be fundamental news that accompanies this, just like Ethereum breaking out of that kind of 
the bull flag that it was in, it was on fundamental news. Technical patterns tell you what's fundamentally going to come. And people that don't believe in technical analysis either don't know how to do it correctly um, or don't know how to do it correctly. You know, it, it, it's quite literally that simple. Uh, and I understand why when it comes to the kind of YouTube sway of things. But there's a lot of things coming into play, a lot of things coming to pass. We're very much setting up, I think, in a very spectacular manner. Uh, lots of the altcoins that we're in are setting up absolutely beautifully. There is still time to join the 1 to 100x challenge. Yes, we are up uh, on the uh, 1K that we put in significantly, certainly given the fact that we've not been doing it for long. Uh, but there's still a long way to go with some of these altcoins in the tens of millions in regards to market cap. Um, so do look to join the Patreon to get on board with that. And of course, unlock my portfolio and the weekly meetings with me when we go into things in a lot more detail. So we are just waiting for this to play out. Um, there's some really interesting things going on across the board right now. Uh, we know that we ran into a little bit, and whilst we're talking about Solana, let's just bring up the chart. You know, this is a beautiful chart to say the least. This is going to break out into price discovery, and 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 who knows? I I could actually see a two thousand dollar Solana price uh, potentially. Certainly, if institutions get on the back end of it, you know, it's been one of the the the, the most accumulated or is the most accumulated altcoin through these products, not just featured, but accumulated through these products altcoin. Um, so you are going to get more ETFs. There's no doubt about that, in my opinion. It's just a case of hurrying up and waiting. And, and this market, like I say, what total to a signal is that you are going to break slightly in momentum, and then you're going to start a journey to $3.7 trillion. Dollars on the back end of this, you've got things like USDT dominance, which is coming down, so on and so forth. Let's talk a little bit about the broader macro. So the crypto space, fundamentally, there's a million and one reasons to be bullish. Technically, there's a million and one reasons to be bullish, not just on uh, crypto, more, uh, not just on the cryptocurrency market, but the, the individual cryptocurrencies. Certainly, Bitcoin, we've given you the setup there for. Let's talk about the kind of uh, macro markets and what's sort of taking place. So this is from Germany, where deflationary forces are intensifying again. Producer prices fell 3.3 year on year in April. In March, the decline was 2.9. PPI is a good lead uh, indicator for CPI. So it's talking about a little bit of an uptick. I don't think this is potentially the case. So we have been coming out against the people that are calling for a 1970s style resurgence in inflation, just like these same people were calling for a crash on the back end of the debt ceiling being upped because of what happened in 2019. Understand the context of things. Just because something's happened previously, you have to look at why it happened and are the conditions the same today. Uh, and the answer quite simply is no. And then we also have another article here saying UK inflation comes out hotter than expected, slashing June rate cuts. UK inflation comes out hotter than expected. Hmm. Okay. We'll show you a chart that makes a lot more sense of that in just a second. Um, but UK inflation fell to 2.3% in April. The Office of National Statistics said on Wednesday, coming closer to the Bank of England's target of rates even while missing expectations. Core inflation, including energy, food, alcohol, and tobacco, dipped to 3.9% in April from 4.2%. So we are still getting deflation across the board. This is alleviating or um, increasing the probability uh, of rate cuts. You know, I told you that story of me having that argument with a mortgage broker uh, of a friend of mine who was trying to get him to fix his rates recently. And I said, why would you do that? And the guy said, well, because rates are high. And I said, well, do you know they're coming down? And they, they, you know, a lot of these people don't have a clue. They're just doing a job, even though it's kind of, you think maybe they'd have a bit of a forward guidance or at least a guess on where they think rates are going and advise people correctly, but it all works on um, sales, essentially, I guess, commission. Um, so of course, there's no incentive for them to do that. But inflation is coming down. Rates are coming down. That's what we think is going to lower the dollar, which of course is going to, fulfill our prophecy of what we think is happening or certainly be a good backdrop for what we think is going to happen that's technically signaled with risk generally and crypto is a very high beta risk this really puts into perspective despite that article trying to sort of cause people to think inflation's not you know it's not doing as well as it should be this really puts things into perspective. this is 11 percent, and this is 2.3 percent this is absolutely spectacular. And actually, we know that markets have ran into a bit of a stall box. If you look at where the dollar gained its strength, let's take this draw off. Gained its strength here, July, or bottomed here, and this is July. 
and we're looking for a reversion in this. And actually markets did quite well on this slightly lower print because they are looking for that. Also, if you look at assets, you know, you already know the correlation between uh, dollar down was the perfect button for the bear market other than Bitcoin, although it was one of the factors we used to help us assess that the bear market was over along with a load of technical analysis. Um, you can see this dollar strength didn't do too well. Then when the dollar rolled, Bitcoin resumed. and it's kind of been going against the tide a little bit here, but not really. So you can see with this strength, markets kind of stalled out. This is what kind of caused the pullback. Again, on inflationary fields, uh, oil just kind of, or uh, the dollar just really following oil. And then you can see as the dollars come down, um, the markets, this is where they started to go up again. And with this little bit of dollar strength, you can see the market sort of teetering. So we need to see this continuation, which we do believe is happening. And I do believe our broad thesis for the dollar, which supports our, the million and one reasons we've spoken about previously is interest rates and where we think they're heading. And that, of course, is all linked to inflation. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, guys, please do so. Um, I don't know too many other people out there that go into as much detail on everything as we do and can put markets together as well as we can. Um, but good news all around. Of course, you've got yields coming down also. The markets don't seem to like yields. Uh, uh, two years, probably more accurate. Um, or 10 years, probably more accurate. They don't seem to like yields sort of above the um, 450 mark. Every time they're below them, they do quite well. Again, this is just a kind of, this going up is anti-risk. This going down is, is, is risk kind of on somewhat. Um, so that is really the video, guys. I do apologize for not being on the camera. It does feel rather strange. However, I am in a different location. I do not have a camera available, but we wanted to get an update out all the same. So good news all around. Uh, it seems like there's a real kind of regulatory shift when it comes to the cryptocurrency space right now. Um, we're getting bills put through. We're going to be talking about one of them in relation to XRP this evening. Um, yeah, just strapping guys for what is going to be a good time ahead of us. You know, we, we, we've gone through the hard part, um, i.e. the bear market where we tried to keep people out of the market. We've been saying... We don't try and do anything with people. It's up to you guys what you want to do. But we were saying we're out the market and this is the reasons why. Then, of course, we got back into the market at the start of 2023. We've kind of been accumulating for what is now, we believe, going to be uh, a good time in the markets. Um, we had the forward guidance to see all that. So that is it from me, ladies and gentlemen. If you've enjoyed the content, like us, appreciate it as a comment and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. See you in the next.